this is the carby first hooked up. Like it hasn't got all the NOS stuff on it yet and all that, but it, it's hooked up, but it's not running well. It, it says to me, um, way too lean. and richen it up somehow but that was the first run i'm working on tuning this cv carburetor but it's really it's given me some troubles and i'm really i've got this to like all the way off and it uh you can see there like it's not even hitting the stop like that is all the way off and it's still idling a bit higher so it's sucking all around the the butterfly I won't, i'll show you that in a bit but so what I'm going to do is practice this bite or have a go at this bypass again. So I've got to put this little nipple uh, in there to bypass the blow for an idle speed. So I'm going to put that there. The problem is you can't see it, but there's one jet hole right there and one vacuum hole right there. And I've got to get it just in the middle. I can't be bothered pulling pull on the whole carby apart. So I've just sort of done that like a surgery. And then I'll drill it and tap it and we'll have a look at it. Beautiful. That's where all the shavings ended up. <laughs> the whole idea of doing that was so that uh, the shavings didn't end up there, but uh, alright, I'll just pick it up and tap it out. Okay, look, this is an update of where I'm up to. You know, this is my first carburetor and I like it because of the power jet and the NOS and all that and, and that's going to have to stay. Whatever carburetor I have, I have to cut that out and transplant it onto another carburetor. There's nothing I'm going to do about that. The, um, the, where did I put that? The jet, oh, on the top here, you know, I had the, the thing there for the, for the bypass. I bet seems to make the slightest bit of difference as in slightly better maybe I need a bigger hole and when I put that tube through to the inlet manifold a bigger hole would be better but it's just it's worth having okay now I've tried this cover I've pulled it apart understand how it works put put that thing in there as you've seen I've taken it back out again um, I can't get this cover to run as much as good as I like uh, mainly because I don't have the jets, I have a lot of jets, but this one just takes a slightly different jets. And I've modified it to take the jets I do have, but it's got quite a few different things going on inside there, and I just can't quite make it work. Anyway, I did have one other carburetor ordered, and it turned up, and it seems to be playing ball. It's just a regular sort of carburetor. It, strangely enough, that, that see-through float bowl fits on there. So I put it on there just to set my float levels. And as you can see, that's about how I like it. I don't want it to be like, um, be able to come out of there just sitting there. So I want to be slightly lower than that ridge. And that's, that's lower than standard. Standard has it up here somewhere. So, so uh, I had to bend it to make it a little bit lower. But there's still plenty of fuel in there. Um, I put the... I put that thin nozzle again that runs around to make the, you know, so the vacuum can, can flow a little bit, bypass the blower at low idle. But it's just a regular carburetor. I have better, I have more jet for this type of carburetor. And I can get it going. But I think my overall problem is I still have to do that transplanting. So I'll take this for a run now. But if I get it going, I still have to do that transplanting of that power jet so I can run the NOS and all that. That's okay. I'm not too worried about that. Well, I think my fundamental problem is that a blower is drag. Like, that drags on the motor. And the motor is a semi-automatic clutch. 
So it has to rev low, otherwise you pop it in a gear and it wants to launch, you know, and it wants to take off, or it's hard to change gears or whatever. So it's designed to have a lowish revs. But a motor, by its very nature, low revs means just enough fuel and air to keep the thing ticking over. No load. Well, that's a load. So the motor needs a few more revs on there to compensate for that load. So it's fighting what I want it to do. So I've got this one better. I've got two springs in there, the, the big spring that these normally come with, and the smaller spring out of one of the other, my first carburetor, so I've doubled up the string, but one's inside the other and they're not binding. So it, it sort of, it, it, it's tight, but it's not, not causing me any issues. So I just started up and, uh, yep, nice start. <laughs> Hang on, I'll just sit this down here for a second. It just idles, it doesn't idle very well. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take take this for a run and see how it goes because it, it's probably my best bet of all the three carbon. <laughs> It's real. It's a real borderline between enough throttle to keep the blower going and too much throttle for doing an automatic gearbox. It's yeah. It's a, it's a balancing point, and I'm not quite winning that balancing point yet because I don't think these little 140ccs or 125s or whatever they want to be. <laughs> I mean to drag a big blower like that, yeah? And the blower's not quite big enough. <laughs> anyway, I'll take it on a test right and see where we go. That, that'll be main jetting when I'm off and going because I've been playing around the pilot jet and it takes... I've pulled that, all these carburetors off so many times to get those pilot jets right and yeah, it's a struggle. <laughs>